first thing what is cider so if we take the acronym or the full form for cider it says that cider is classless interdomain routing so i hope you remember your engineering network classes so classless was termed as like where we actually ignore the address classes like a b or c and we consider it as an idea where the ipv4 address has two parts so the prefix part and the host part as defined by the masking values and we don't consider the class here unlike what we did in the classful one and we use this classless addressing in interdomain routing which is a type of routing algorithm that works within and between domains and when we create a vpc we must specify a range of ipv4 addresses for the vpc in the form of a cider block that is our classless interdomain routing block so that we tell aws that we are going to create the vpc and we need this block of network addresses as a part of our family so within which we will divide this and make small parts and that is what we will learn next okay so the first thing that you need to remember here before creating one of uh, the classless interdomain routing cider is a method for allocating ip addresses and for ip routing okay so cider is a method for allocating ip addresses and for iip routing so the value that you see here 10.0.0.1/16 is a cider block and you don't have to take my word for it why should you believe if i say that it's a cider block so for that let's learn why that is a cider block okay so for now think of this 10.0.0.1/16 to be an ipv4 address range that will make up for our vpc but if you see this the block is being divided into three parts so the first part is the ip address the second part is the slash that you see and the third one is a decimal number and each of them have a or each of them has a certain significance okay so the first half represents the ip address and the second half is your subnet mask so collectively that slash and the decimal actually is termed to be a subnet mask so don't worry if you don't know what is a subnet mask but remember this for now and if you see the image here we can understand that a vpc moves across all the availability zones that we have and considering that we are not going to create availability zones that is already available and aws provides us with the availability zones what we are going to create is we have to create smaller groups that can be termed as a subgroups or networks or subnetworks or what we call as subnets and in vpc you can add more than one subnet in your availability zone so don't get confused here az is itself a resource center where you can host applications we will just provide it a network group so that we can access the instances and the resources there but what our intention is here just we are trying to name our smaller family groups i hope you remember we discussed local zones where we actually discussed about aws regions and we can also add subnets in local zones as well that will help provide services closer to our end users for faster access and if suppose i want to create subnets in uh, availability zones then i have to create them by taking a subset of the cider block ip range and make a subnet out of it as az is isolated your subnet should remain within the availability zones because uh, for what i am asking you this so that actually we can eradicate a single point of failure and that is why we call it as high availability if you create one subnet that is actually spanning across two three availability zones there is no point in making it isolated isn't it and that cannot be possible as well so i'm just saying in terms of actually explaining to you why it should be isolated within the availability zones or why it should be available within the isolated availability zones okay so that we can eradicate the single point of failure and as i'm speaking just try and imagine that we have subnets in these availability zones and they are isolated from each other but are made by the subsets of the cider block okay so let's suppose this is a cider block so these are made from the subset of the cider blocks and now as we need ip address we need a range from them isn't it so now if suppose i want to access instance from this availability zone 
and it should have IP address, right? But this actually needs a set of IP addresses or a range of IP address because there is not going to be only one instance, isn't it? There can be multiple instances. So for that, we need to understand the number of IP address allocations. Okay. So the subnet mask that you see here slash 16 is the one that is going to determine how many IP addresses are you going to get out of this CIDR block. So subnetting is a concept of dividing a network logically to create separate space. So by the way, we determine how the network has been divided. We look at the subnet mask, which tells us how it has been divided and how many IPs are there in the subnet or, or the subset or the network that we have. And if you see below, so 192.168.0.1 slash zero, actually it covers all the IPs in the range and slash 22 here covers 1024 IP addresses and slash 32 can only cover one IP in the IP range. So you must be feeling that the way it is covering the IP range actually depends on the masking value, right? So slash 22 slash zero slash 32 and all the IP address remains same and the subnet value is only changing and there the IP range is also changing. So you might be feeling like the subnet value that we have here is basically the determinant factor to determine what actually would be the coverage of the IP addresses. But the question would be how? How is it doing that? So that's what we'll understand next. So when we talk about the subnet mask, you might have already seen something like 255.250.250.0, isn't it? Or at least heard someone like use the term, hey, the subnet mask for this IP address should be this. But when it comes to AWS or Unix based terminology, we come across subnets or like slash 22 or slash 16 or slash 24. And in our sessions on AWS, we will be referring to these type of terminologies that is with slash rather than IP patterns. So these are the two forms of subnet masks. So that we have. So one is IP based pattern and the other one is slash based that is slash 24 slash 16 or slash 32. And in, but in this session, I want you to understand both the ways. So even though you won't use it, I want you guys to understand the concept. And when we talk of IP addresses, we know that an IP address is a 32 bit number that uniquely identifies a host. So host can be a computer or other device such as a printer or a router on a TCP IP network. So this is the textbook definition, isn't it? And as you can see here, we have the IP address 192.168.123.54 and it's 32 bit representation. So when I create an 8 bit binary for this value, then I get the below long 32 bit representation. So 1160.1010.100.0.051, sorry, 41s, 011.0011.0110. So this is basically a 32 bit representation. So you can count the number of digits here. You will be having 32 because everything is eight bit. Okay. So eight into four is 32. So simple maths. So there is a site actually you can validate this online and you can use the Google to actually validate this. So you can just go online and check for the conversion of uh, IP address to a 32 bit representation. You will get that. And when you see this IP address, it has four individual numbers, isn't it? So let's divide them. So we have 192.168.123.54 and we'll divide this into four parts. So 192.168.123.54. So this belongs to which class? I hope you remember the class actually we saw that previously in the list of charts that we had. So it is a private IP and it's a class C of private IP whose range is from 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.255.255. Have you seen this anywhere? I think you have like something in your home. Okay. So, so this is the type of private IP that we are currently using for the example. Okay. So now if I convert this into binary, I have the values like this that I've already spoken about. And the first three numbers form the network address, which lets you distinguish between the host and the network itself. And the last part is actually your host. So 192.168.123 is the network address. Remember this very carefully. And the 54 points to the host itself. It can be your own computer that you're currently using right now. So it forms each of eight bits network for the three parts and eight bit host for the last part. So as you can see here, we have eight bits network. So basically it forms the network address and we have the eight bits host. And further, actually the last eight bit host also is divided into two parts. Imagine, okay, so one of which is the five bit subnet and the other one is three bit host. So imagine you have a network of 128 addresses. 
So out of which one will be the subnet address and one will be the broadcast. So out of 128 addresses that you have, we will be left with 126 addresses. So let's suppose we divide this into four, then we will have 32 addresses each. So as well, now you can reduce two from each of them or two from each 32. So you will be left with 30 that you can multiply it by four. So that is 120. Now, if you had original space of 128 network addresses, now you will be left with 120 addresses. That's how the subnet masking works. But I'm sure it's a bit confusing. I can assure you that it's completely fine.